In this video, I'm going to go over a little utility for Linux and Windows that's used for annotating PDF files, and it's called Zornal. And if you found this link on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video that shows you how to use Zornal. I have a, a link to the instruction manual, and I show you illustrate, illustrated pictures for how I use it uh, when I was a teacher, and how students can use it, and how you can download and install it if you're on a Windows system, because it's not just something for Linux. And let me give you that little brief description here, and then we'll show you an application of it. Uh, Zornal is an application for note-taking, sketching, keeping a journal, using a stylus on a tablet PC, and other types of platforms such as Windows. This is a great little tool for anyone that uses a Linux tablet notebook. This app is great for PDF annotation and it's very lightweight and it works great with older systems. Now let me show you very quickly how I use it. Uh, as a teacher, I put a lot of things, or as a past teacher, I put a lot of things on my websites and recently I started helping a friend uh, uploading some of the material that I had on my old website uh, because he's in another county and he was needing some information that I used to use so I was in the process of recreating uh, my old website when I taught fifth grade science and some of the materials that I put on here are homework assignments where students could click onto it and as you can see here this is a PDF file it looks very similar to an exam or the type of exam questions that they would have at the end of the year so this is a great way for them to practice it like at home now if they had this application if they used a Windows system or a Linux system they would be able to open up this from my web page download it open it up using Zornal and answer the questions and print it out. Now to start with you got a toolbar across the top very similar to most software that you have. You have your menu bar up here and it has lots and lots of options. You've got your save, new, open. I'm not going to go through and explain them all but these are your zoom features. That zooms out. This zooms in. This puts it a normal view. This puts it where it stretches it out wide view and this makes it full screen and that's your zoom set where you can set your zoom if you have a multiple page document that goes to the last page that goes to the first page and this advances throughout the different pages of your document now the pen here allows you to freehand write now with a mouse uh, it's very hard to freehand I mean I can but it wouldn't look good this is your eraser now the repeat when people look at this and think it's got an eraser it's not for erasing existing text on the PDF file this is not a PDF editor it's a PDF annotator which means it allows you to write over an existing PDF file this right here is a highlighter this is a text where you can use your keyboard this is great for people with PCs that's got a mouse that can't write great freehanded this is where you can add an image this is a shape recognizer this is a ruler not necessarily where it adds a ruler to your screen to where you measure things this allows you to draw straight edges like using a straight edge of a ruler this here is your uh, select region select a rectangle vertical space this allows you to pan and these are other uh, where you set your default pins like there's your thin uh, pin your medium and your large thick so if I was highlighting I could make a thick highlight and, and I could change my color and I could choose the different types of fonts and sizes so let's take a look as a teacher if I wanted to create myself an answer key to start with I'm going to use the keyboard instead of handwriting so I'd use the text feature I choose my color and instead of using black since that's black text I'll use red and then I come up here and I can write like the word key and then when I click away from it, it has the word key. And if I wanted to answer the first question, I could click over over the line, click a little bit higher than that, and then I could put the answer like a C. Then I go to the next answer, and I could put like it's A. Then I could go to the next one, and I could put that it's D, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to answer each of these because it's not about science. But if you can see here, I wrote key, and I could be a little bit more accurate on where I'm placing the information. Or I could use the highlighter. I could come here and say highlighter and by default it goes to the yellow. You can click and change the colors or you can go and create your own color palette if the color that you like is not on up here at the top. Now if I look, if I wanted to highlight C, I could highlight C. Now if I wanted to where it goes to tools, I could say uh, shape recognizer. Let me undo here and I think it's going to undo my shape recognizer but no it didn't it kept that so if I wanted to say C it makes a straight line so here if I go A 
it'll make a straight line. So when you're using the shape recognizer, even though it's not perfectly straight, it'll make it straight for you. And the same thing with, and, and if you hit undo the first time, it won't. It makes it freehand undoing the next time and it will here. So I should still have the shape recognizer. And if I go D and I make it a little wavy, it straightened. Well, no, it's because it was so far off it didn't recognize it. But there it did. It straightened it out. So you can use the highlighter. So if you're a student and you're going over the answers, you can bring this up if you have a laptop or you can pull this up at home and you can highlight your answers this way. It gives you lots of options. You can type information. So if you're grading, if students put their answers and write their name and send this to you electronically, you could go through here and check their papers and the ones they miss you could highlight. And if you want to make little comments out to the side, you could write. You could say study page so and so to where they know where to go to. So it's not just great for teachers, it's great for students or anyone that annotates PDF files. You can include images and images to your existing PDF file. And here's something I like, this little tool uh, right here. If you look at the shape recognizer like up here. And so the shape recognizer, like it, let me go back to a pen. Let me go to change the color to black. Let's say that I make a square. And it's not a perfect square, but since I got a shape recognizer, well, it was so far off it didn't. I don't have it selected. Let me make a square. And when I finish, it straightens it up. That's because I'm using a shape recognizer. It recognizes that I'm trying to make a square and it squares it up for me. So if you're using uh, this for mathematical equations or drawing images, it will help you make better pictures. Now let's say, for example, that I wanted to save this. When I go to File and hit Save and Save As, it will not save it as a PDF file. What this is, is if you're working on a very long PDF document and you go to File, Save, it's going to give it an extension of XOJ. That's not a PDF format where you're going to open on other computers. It opens up just with this program. That way that you can, like if you're working on something very long and it's going to take you a long time to annotate it, you can hit save, come back later, open it up, and it saves your progress. So your save and save as. Save as allows you to name it for the first time. Then you can hit the save button to save your progress. If you wanted to export this or to save it as a PDF file, you have to go to export to PDF. When you click on that, it will open up, and since the existing file was Newton's Law, you can give it a new name. I recommend giving it a new name, and they're putting .pdf here so it won't overwrite the original. So you can get rid of one of those extensions and say, I can come over here and say Newton's Law 02. So when I hit Save, it's going to place it in that same folder. Now you've got the option of changing the folders, so when I close out this program, let me go File, New. I say discard the changes here. I'll go back in my education and there's my Newton Laws, the original. There's the Newton Law, the one that I just saved. So when I click onto it, it now has the answer key up here, C, A, D, and it shows where I highlighted. So it saved that to a PDF form. Now, you don't have to just use it to annotate PDFs. You can write, like this looks like a regular sheet of notebook paper, and you can change your page appearance, your style. You can go to plain paper, looks like typing paper. You can go like the line that you just saw here. You can choose a ruled paper. Well, it's the same thing as your notebook paper without the red line. You can go to a graphing paper. This is, works great when you're working with math problems if you're a math teacher or math student. So if I go back to line paper, you can change the color to whatever you want. White's the default. You can change yellow paper. You can change pink paper. You can change it to orange paper. And you see the different colors. Blue, green, and then whatever other color that you want. If there's a color that you don't have here, you can choose this and choose whichever color and hit OK. And it makes your background that color. So you can change your background color. There's lots of other features that I'm not going to show here for the keep this video short. This is just to show you that there's tools out there used to annotate PDFs, existing PDFs, or where you can create. You can freehand, like if I wanted to put my name, notice I still have shape recognition. So my O looks pretty good, my T looks pretty good. Probably won't do with my M's because it won't recognize what they are. Looks like I'm a kindergartner or a first grader because I'm writing with a mouse. But anyhow, that's me freehanding. If you have a digitizer or a stylus, you could write it a lot better if you had a touch screen or a uh, active slate or a tablet where you're writing on. Or you can go up here if you're using a keyboard, choose your text, increase the size of your font. You could come down here and say, I want to use like a 36. You see the size of the font, and then I write my name. And then I click away from it and there it is. You can change to whatever font you want. 
you can choose regular italics bold uh, bold and italics and however you want so if you this is just another tool for uh, taking notes it's a tool for annotating PDFs but it's not necessarily a PDF editor because the eraser that you have here will erase the contents that you do on as you're annotating but it will not remove the existing text within a PDF file you have to use other programs for that hopefully if you've never seen Zornal you have a little idea of what it is and how it works hopefully this bit video has been helpful to you and have a great day